Okay, so uh, hello and welcome everybody and uh, hello and welcome to uh, Tina and uh, Jim and Michael. Very happy to see you. Always, uh, always a pleasure and thanks very much for joining me today on our conversation on uh, business development. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, Tina, Michael and Jim, uh, Jim, they're part of my mastermind group. And if you're interested in finding out more about what the mastermind is, then all you have to do is go to my website, performancelaws.com, and you can check mastermind out and all the other solutions that we offer. And as I said, this uh, recording here today is on business development. And the reason why I wanted to take some time out of uh, the busy schedule of my fellow participants here is because it's not entirely easy to find quality content on how you actually go about developing your business and how you go about marketing it. Very often that kind of information stops at the point where you cover how you need a website, how you need a LinkedIn profile, how you need to post on LinkedIn and other social media and do a good job when you're interacting with your clients and referral parties. But anything above that, is tricky, especially in this space. So that's what sort of we're covering a little bit here today, giving you a taster of, of that. And the area that we're talking about is pretty much anything relating to professionals who are deriving most of their business from attorneys and from law firms. But if you are a neutral, you're a mediator that is focused on getting clients or referrals from non-attorney parties, then this is absolutely relevant for you as well. So I guess that's it by, by way of, of contextualizing this conversation. So welcome again. And, uh, and uh, let's see what we can cover here today. So I guess the first, the first question I would, would have for you is, obviously you are all established. You've been doing what you are doing for for a decent amount of time. And as people are starting out as mediators, as arbitrators, um, other professions in this space, what, would, what kind of advice would you give them? Someone who's just starting out, maybe they haven't received any cases at all. Maybe they've just received a few. Maybe they have a limited network. What, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I'll start. I think, okay. Go ahead, Michael. So, sorry. Uh, the, um, the first piece of advice I would give to someone just starting out as a mediator is uh, make sure you have a year's worth of income to uh, sustain you because uh, seriously, it's uh, not easy to make a transition, especially, you know, a cold transition from the practice of law or something else to mediating the fact that, uh, you know, you know a lot of people and think those people are gonna give you business is, uh, is probably the most mistaken assumption that uh, a lot of us have made uh, upon uh, trying to make the transition. Oh, you know, I know so many people and uh, I, I built a lot of relationships. My personal experience and that of many of my colleagues was that um, the people that you thought were gonna give you business uh, don't, at least don't immediately. And in some cases, never do. So, uh, you know, there's some, some, some tongue in cheek with that, right? Uh, it's not a direct response necessarily to the question, but I really do think it's important to establish that. And then, uh, you know, I'll defer to my uh, colleagues, but uh, in direct answer to the sort of business development aspect of it, I think it's really important to, um, to get, a, to, to come up with a plan uh, rather than just try and do it um, ad hoc. I have to say that I uh, was one of the ad hocers. Uh, one of the reasons I'm here is because I, I made a lot of uh, mistakes. I did a lot of things right, but I made a lot, a lot of mistakes at the beginning. And uh, I hope that uh, throughout this call, uh, I can share some of those. Uh, and then also um, why I'm working with Dan, we can get to later uh, because I think it's very important to get the right person uh, to help with the planning uh, and then to help stick with the plan. Thank you, Michael. 
I, I would echo uh, the, all of what Michael said, uh, particularly that first part. Um, there is a, a learning curve, not a learning curve. There's a business development curve. And, uh, you know, people, you can be as skilled uh, as all get out as a mediator. Um, and you still have to build that practice. And it, it does take a good year. I've heard other uh, people say two years. So uh, be prepared for that. I think it's really important as you develop your practice, uh, as you enter the practice, um, to think about and try to understand what your clients need, what, not what you think they need, but talk to lawyers. And this was part of my initial marketing thrust. Talk to lawyers and say, what do you need from me? as a mediator? What are you looking for in a mediator? Um, don't make assumptions necessarily. Talk, talk to the customer and see what they need. And then try to understand what it is about you that, uh, that meets that need. How uh, I mean, there's so many mediators now. And we all have, I think, essentially the same skill set. I mean, we basically all take the same training in one form or another. Uh, but what is it about me that distinguishes me from my several excellent colleagues. Um, uh, I think that's important as well. Mm. Tina, what are your thoughts? And thanks for the question. Um, I'm gonna emphasize the, the part of your question where you said for someone just starting out, um, because I think oftentimes, and I know I was part of a non-traditional route, meaning that I did not start my business as a, a former attorney. I'm not an attorney. And um, one of the messages that was provided to students who were in the training was, as soon as you finish this class, you can hang your shingle. And I, I think a key part of being, a, being in the space um, as an arbitrator, mediator, or if you're an, a neutral in some other fashion, is relationship building. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a part of business development that doesn't get talked about. And what does that look like? Um, I know I specifically, when I first started out, if I attended a conference, I literally would get business, the business cards of people and I would send them an email. Um, mm. I might send them a holiday card, but the connection, that connection sometimes stayed and it wasn't always give me a case. It was, you know, tell me more about your organization. So it's that relationship building that I think is crucial. And sometimes we are so ready to, you know, can you give me a case? I agree with Michael. The last group that I anticipated um, giving me cases and they were true to what I anticipated were people who were already in my network because they either had a perception that of me in another capacity or it was too close. And again, this goes back to relationships. Or if that relationship is going to be severed or impacted in some negative way, people are a little less hesitant. You know, the neighbor down the street is a little less hesitant to have you involved in their mediation because they may wanna preserve that relationship or they may not want you to be privy to what's going on. So I'm mindful of that. And I, I think in business development, it's fine to tell you know, family, friends, the larger circle, but I don't necessarily look at those groups, those, those closer circles as um, clients for me per se, but maybe someone that I could refer them to instead. I, I think the other part of your question is any mistakes along the way. And I would say the one mistake that I can see that I made was um, getting, not differentiating um, and, and the markets that I wanted to pursue. And I think that when I did differentiate, I oftentimes um, let traditional um, ideology regarding that space overwhelm or, or um, take me in a different direction. So, you know, know, know the markets you want to pursue. Uh, mediation is a very wide field and I, arbitration for that matter. And some are specialized. So if you know you have specialized training experience or knowledge or combination thereof, capitalize it. Um, it you know, the one thing that where none of us have said is this can be a competitive market. I'm not suggesting and I'm not encouraging people to tear other people down. Um, that generally has a boomerang effect, 
But what I am saying is know, know what you can do and know what you're willing to do. And I think the other part is, um, and I've mentioned this elsewhere, sometimes you have to pay your dues and paying your dues means you might have to do something for free um, or pro bono for the later reward of having something that you generate income from. And I wholeheartedly say to people, don't stop what you're doing. Um, you know, go, if you're going into the space, know that it's not gonna be immediate or magic. Um, if you have another source of, re of revenue stream, maintain it until you know you can completely untether from it. The last thing you want to do is be worried about how you're gonna pay your mortgage because you're pursuing a dream that right now isn't allowing you to pay the mortgage and you feel like it's um, you know, one or the other and it could be both for the, 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 the first start. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Tina. I think uh, very good points brought up here and we could probably have a, a conversation for, for several hours about, about this space, but I, I, do, I do agree that, that uh, if you're starting from scratch, we're mainly talking about developing visibility and your network and neither of those happens overnight. I mean, I think anybody who's interacting with a professional audience, trying to get them as clients or referral parties will find that it is slightly challenging. And, I, and, and in this context, we're mainly interacting with attorneys and, and uh, I'm no attorney myself, but I would say that it's probably even more challenging than having just a general audience of professional professionals. So, so, time is really important. And uh, just because you may have a great deal of visibility or a great network, I think going back to what you said, Michael, in whatever you've done previously, even within the space, within the field of law, that's not necessarily uh, 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 something that, that provides you with a complete setup for what you're doing now as a mediator, as an expert witness. I mean, that that visibility that, that you have cannot be directly transferred into what you're doing now. Um, so anything to, anything to add to this topic or should we move on to a more current situation? One more? Uh, well, I was gonna just say, I mean, Tina, um, uh, almost every sentence that Tina said could generate, I think, as you said, Dan, you know, an hour or two of discussion. So there, were, <laughs> there was a lot, there was a lot really to un unpack there, all of it, you know, very wise. But I guess my um, turning back to sort of just starting out um, and the importance of planning, I think um, one of the things that Dan helps with uh, two aspects of what's very important. And I would be surprised if any of us did this consciously uh, on our own uh, is first, uh, as Tina described, you know, knowing, uh, and Jim, knowing your customers and differentiating them. So one part of Dan's program is about what he calls identifying the ecosystem. Uh, and that's very important to help know uh, your customers. And, and more important, I think, uh, at the very beginning is knowing yourself, which is what Jim also uh, touched on, but I think it, it can't be overemphasized. In a sense, this is like a branding exercise, or it should be at the beginning. And, uh, you know, you need to define uh, the characteristics that distinguish you uh, as a brand and figure out then how you're going to go about um, building that brand and making sure that everything that you do uh, is consistent with that. Again, you know, we could have a whole, uh, and we have actually as part of Dan's program, um, hour long calls on just that. Uh, but I really think it's important uh, at, uh, at the outset, you know, to really understand yourself and, and then your customer base. And write yeah. it down. <laughs> so I mean, write it down. I mean, a lot of us go through these exercises, but you know, really to to do it well. And again, uh, the importance of having someone hold uh, you accountable for doing this uh, again can't be overemphasized because I think all of us intuitively do some of this stuff, but uh, 
you know, I, I said when I met Dan, Tiger Woods has a golf coach, right? So why shouldn't why shouldn't we as mediators uh, who are at least myself nowhere near the business developer that Tiger Woods is the golfer, perhaps it'd be a good idea to have a coach uh, in that regard too. You know, all high performers uh, or almost all per high performers have some ongoing coaching. And I think that's uh, very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. I think that's a good, uh, good ending to our, our first discussion point. And then the second one, I just wanted to fast forward from those early days to, to where you are now. So being more established and having conducted that first part of the journey, what do you see as important today for you to develop your business? What kind of activities, what, what mindset, what is it that, that moves the dial today? Because you obviously become more sophisticated in, in how you approach business development. And for me, I think I go back to the word you just mentioned, mindset. Uh, for me, I've, I'm, I think, 16, probably going on 17 years into a full-time ADR practice now, both mediation and arbitration. And I think what helps me uh, continue to develop business is just the ability to think about what kinds of cases I want to focus on, what I like to do, what I want to do, where I want to grow. Uh, just that, that sense of focus, that mindset really then helps me target who I need to approach and how I need to present myself. It's just having done this for so long. And I don't know that it's any different than any other career in that sense. You, you get established in a career and you think, now, how do I want this career to move forward? What do I want it to look like moving forward? So it's, it's really that mindset. And that focus for me, that's important. Mm -hmm. That drives so much of what else I do marketing wise, who I approach, how I present myself. Thank I, you, Jim. I, I would agree with Jim. I, I, I do think it's about mindset. I also think that it is a matter of visibility. Um, you know, as we become more established, uh, how, do you, how do you remain visible? And it doesn't mean that you are um, presenting yourself you know, as the, the rock star on, on every post, but are you being thoughtful, being intentional, and sometimes being deliberate about the messaging um, and thinking about what's in it for the customer. In this case, the customer is, are the parties that you are, are dealing with? Is it, do they wanna know that you are consistently considered neutral, fair, impartial to the extent possible, or is it, your skills, experience um, that they need that needs to be visible, but it's the visibility I think that really makes the difference. Um, and that visibility can be in a number of ways. That visibility can be speaking engagements. It could be writing um, in journals. Uh, all of you know those are some activities. If you're not interested in writing, you know, at least make it be known that you you're available. Um, and this goes back to the business development piece. If you've established um, connection with others who may receive a call or an email, they can say, you know what, that's not my, that's not my sweet spot, but contact Michael or contact Jim. Um, that's their area of expertise. And knowing that there's some reciprocity, I, I, I think that definitely makes a difference in the business development because it, it generally lends itself to some organic growth. Um, because that other person, if they know that you are making the referrals, they in turn may hopefully um, are referring back to you. I think that's a that's a great point, or several great points, Tina. But but the 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 part about networking for your network really elevates things to another level. It's very easy for us to all want more business and and try to position ourselves for that through our engagement and interaction with. Know, attorneys and other clients and referral parties but where we sort of really start seeing some kind of value delivery ultimately is when we zoom out and not only have ourselves in focus agreed what what are your thoughts michael <clears throat> so um i think that uh i'm going to go back to something that tina said about the starting out 
uh, in building Tina, relationships. You're getting a, you're getting a lot of links to your your comments there. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Michael. It was not pre-planned. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that's the thing. It, it, uh, this is all unscripted, as if you couldn't tell <laughs> from my stuttering around here. But Tina's um, Tina's point about not asking for cases necessarily when you're building your relationships. Uh, and in fact, I would take it a step further and and I would say don't. You know, at the beginning, uh, instead, um, and I and this carries through to the question of what works now. I, I'm I'm constantly looking for what I can do for someone else. And again, relating it back to mindset, um, I think that uh, this this has worked for me, and it's kind of a late in late in my business development career, so to speak, when uh, I thought I figured out that. Um, especially, you know, as Jim said, uh, there's lots and lots of mediators and more every, every day. And um, especially in my market, which is Southern California, um, it's very competitive. And so there's lots of people asking lawyers for cases. And if you wanna go to, you know, attend a conference uh, either, you know, either online or when we can do that again in person, and hover around with all the other law, uh, mediators who are asking for business, then you'll just be one of them, uh, as opposed to really uh, taking some time to figure out how you might be of assistance to somebody else, because that's what they'll remember. Uh, so that's one, one thing that I've found. Uh, two sort of advanced um, business development uh, was, um, provided by one of our colleagues in one of Dan's group calls, which I've termed uh, business development jujitsu. Uh, and uh, I give him uh, credit, um, but uh, that is using every communication that you get from somebody else as a, a possible avenue, an entree to, uh, depending on who it is, to, uh, to develop business, whether that's a cold call from someone uh, telling you uh, through some uh, uh, constant contact marketing communication that they're speaking or something more personal, you can just uh, respond to that appropriately in a way that um, uh, is just another touch point in terms of building the relationship. And then finally, sort of, uh, I, I think uh, at the other end of the spectrum, from starting out, um, when you are developed, you know, uh, in practice uh, as a mediator or neutral for as long as uh, we have been, um, then I think you should start asking for cases uh, because, uh, and, and at some point it, it's usually, uh, you know, a, and who do you ask? Uh, in the case that I'm kind of referring to, it's asking people who've already given you cases and maybe you haven't had one in a while. So by that time, you know, they already know your uh, skill set, they've worked with you. And by then it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't come across, uh, um, it comes across differently than it might otherwise at a different stage of the relationship. And, uh, you know, I've actually had personal success over the past uh, three or four weeks, simply uh, asking someone, hey, how come we haven't worked together? You know, and in this day and age, the answer usually has been, well, because of the pandemic. <laughs> um, but now uh, I've gotten two cases in the past three weeks um, simply by asking someone that I hadn't mediated with for over a year if it, if it were now a convenient time for us to resume our professional relationship, so to speak. Yeah, uh, e excellent po points, Michael. And I, I you know, especially happy, obviously, about the cases, but but also I think going back to one of our individual recent conversations, just touching upon the point of jujitsu moves and and providing value and thinking of not only yourself. Um, in the early stages, every single business development activity kind of is an activity in isolation. Um, I get my LinkedIn profile, I get my website. Now let's, let's try to get to know some people. Let's try to get to stay in touch with some people. Let's try to deliver some value. Um, 
But at some point when all of that becomes more familiar, it all links together and everything sort of becomes an opportunity. And I realize how that sounds vague, but that's, I guess, what you're saying in essence, that every email, every conversation is, a, is an opportunity to provide value, find out more information, and, and ultimately bring your business forward. Yeah, I, I think you either have to really enjoy learning about other people or you know, be able to fake that you enjoy it because I think that's the, <laughs> yeah. the biggest way to um, develop business is to learn about other people. And as my colleagues have been saying in different ways, you know, really customize, uh, still be true to your brand, of course, but you know, it's marketing, uh, uh, it's, it's just the basics of marketing uh, that you want to deliver to the customer what the customer wants. And, you know, there aren't many Steve Jobs that can tell the customer, you know, you need to have this. So focusing on what the customer wants and maybe helping the customer uh, refine, uh, you know, how they think about mediators and, you know, why it matters. It's not just uh, necessarily the, the, the mediator that the other party suggests. Uh, that mediator might be fine for nine out of 10 cases, but I think it might be your, uh, one of the things you can do to explain to people why you know you are the proper mediator for that tenth case, when just you know some any any of the dozens of mediators out there may not be the right one. That's another way to think about this, because yeah. every case obviously every case obviously is the one you're you know you're marketing uh, as the tenth case, right? That's the point. Uh, and every lawyer, um, in, for the most part, at least in what I do, um, which is, uh, you know, it's broadening, so I'm not going to narrow it, but uh, every lawyer thinks that their case is different from the last case, which it is. Um, but uh, I think it's important for us to focus on <clears throat> why, why we're the right mediator for that case, even though what we really mean is every case. Yeah. Anything to add to, to that, Jim? Do well, you know? I, I think the overall message is if, if you're going, and, and this maybe segues into something else you want to talk about, Dan, but uh, if you're going into this practice, you have to market. And marketing is a two-way street. It's not a sales job. Uh, it, it's learning from the client, what they need from you, and then educating the client as to how you can help them. Uh, but you do have to market. And I think what's key is finding a way of marketing uh, that you're comfortable with. Some people really have difficulty picking up the phone and having that conversation. That's okay. There are alternatives. There are alternatives, but you have to, you have to market and you have to find a way of doing that, that you're comfortable with. that represents you. Um, great, great point. I think that uh, that's absolutely true in my mind as, as well. Uh, there is not a scripted formula for developing no. your business, whether you're an expert witness, legal consultant, mediator, arbitrator, coach. Uh, it all needs to fit in with what you're doing and your personality. And ultimately, since we're talking about network and relationships, if we all deliver exactly the same thing in the exact same way, how is our potential clients possibly going to be able to distinguish between us? So we want to be different. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so I guess we're, we're going to move on then to the final question. <laughs> and, uh, and no conversation complete without it. But obviously, I need to ask you, so, so what, are your, what are your thoughts on the uh, the main benefits of being in the mastermind program with working with 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 me in that program let me let me pick up uh, on something uh michael said early on in the conversation sure uh, <laughs> it, it's about not having to reinvent the wheel i forget exactly how you said it michael but i know when when people coming into the practice ask me what i did to get busy and this is having to reach back 16 or 17 years ago, I can tell them all of the things I did, but I can't tell them which of those things actually were effective. Um, so I think, uh, Dan, what I've gained so much from your program 
is, and again, it sounds very simplistic, not having to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you've helped me focus on the things that are effective, find out, identify the things that are effective, and then how to implement those things, uh, whether it's through social media, LinkedIn, uh, effective ways to follow up with clients. Uh, uh, I, I tell many people, uh, and, and this is a, a blatant endorsement of Dan, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> if I'd have known uh, as, as, as busy as I've gotten, if I'd have known 15 or 16 years ago, what I know now, I would have hooked up with somebody like Dan very early on, very early on. Uh, it would have uh, saved me a lot of spinning wheels, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. No competition here in terms of compliments. I, it's, uh, you know, I, I think what Jim's brought up is very relevant. That, that's essentially the roadmap going from point A to point B uh, in the fastest and most efficient time. So, so I think that's re very relevant. In, in fact, while I'm on a roll, Dan, and this is completely oh. unsolicited, but um, you know, it, it, going back to that idea of mindset and thinking about what I want to do moving the career, moving forward in this career. Um, I think working uh, with performance laws with Dan has really helped me identify for myself certain goals. And then having identified those goals, thinking about the most effective ways to attain them. Thank you very much, sir. Tina, Michael, anything to add on top of that? I don't know if it, it's adding. Um, I think a, it may be a different perspective. Um, I, I agree with what Jim has said. I know for me, um, in the year plus that we've been working together, Dan, um, it's been an opportunity to explore um, where the business is and where I would like to take the business. And it's meant... Um, sometimes really having a sounding board to talk about the pros and cons of the next step. Um, since we started, my company has expanded its service areas and it wasn't an easy journey. Um, you know, most of us in this space are risk averse, you know, to the extent that we can be. And so suddenly saying, you know, I think I want to explore this space what's the impact going to be on the other areas of my business has been um, both helpful, but also um, insightful because it has literally, um, you know, you and I have had a lot of discussions analyzing, you know, here's the yeah. pros, the cons. Um, this is what you may want to look at. You know, what can, what do you have today that can be either reformatted, restructured, or literally um, redesigned so that, it fits in this new space that you're looking at. Uh, mm. That that to me has been crucial. The the group calls are good because it's it's I think it's helpful to talk with colleagues in a what I would assume to be a non competitive environment. Um, what works, what's not working, or hey, this is this is coming up. But also the support. So um, when Michael or Jim says, you know, I posted something on LinkedIn. I know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to comment. Usually it's a like, or, you know, great job, but that's helpful um, because in this space, we don't often have someone who is truly, you know, rooting for you. And I think that's been, that's been both helpful, but also insightful because other people see the, the comments, the likes, and they're like, who is this person? Why is this person? Why is Michael always liking her posts? You know, why is Jim always getting comments from this woman? And they're not only looking at that person, they're looking at the person who's posted the comment. So um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's been, you know, it's been a two-way street in that regard. So it's, mm. I, I, I've enjoyed it. Um, it's made me think again, you know, that, that hard accountability um, not in a sense of you have to do this by this date, although you do do that. Um, it's been more of the, well, Tina, you said you wanted to expand this part of your business. Um, where are you on this? And really, you know, saying maybe sometimes it's maybe I need to put this off for a month or two without, with no judgment, but also knowing that it's my decision and that, you know, as a coach, if you will, um, you support that endeavor. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So, so my turn. Um, 
do we have enough tape left, you know, for me to do all the <laughs> compliments? I'm, so, I'm sure we could accommodate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm dating myself, you know, on, on purpose by asking it like that about the tape. But um, no, seriously, um, Jim said if he had known 16 or 17 years ago, um, you know, he would have worked with um, somebody like Dan back then. I mean, the, the biggest way I can summarize this is I've tried people like Dan. Uh, so this was not, Dan was not my first uh, uh, entree or attempt at having someone uh, coach, I would say, uh, these activities. But at least for me, um, I have none of them were like Dan. And why is that? Number one, obviously, there is a personal aspect to it, right? Uh, just like any relationship, there has to be a fit. So uh, given the diversity of the group that we have on our calls, you know, I think that Dan uh, is a fit for a lot of different types of people. Uh, what we know we have in common is that we're trying to build a business uh, and we need help doing it uh, in a business that's marketing to attorneys. So that's number one. Uh, number two is the structure of Dan's program is different from anything I've ever encountered in this particular space. Uh, and number three, Tina mentioned it uh, as accountability. I mean, again, I joke with Dan about how he, in a good way, he reminds me of my piano teacher uh, that I had when I was a kid because and I, I always did what I, and I did most of what I was supposed to do in terms of practicing because, uh, you know, I didn't want to disappoint the piano teacher. So at this stage, um, and, and, and eventually it was about, hey, I'm actually not, bad at playing the piano. So it got to be about the fact that I could actually play the piano, or in this case, actually get cases uh, because of what I was doing. And it, was, it became more about, oh, that's the reward in and of itself. And that's the goal. And so it, it no longer is about uh, pleasing the piano teacher, so to speak. Uh, but there, uh, in all seriousness, uh, could go on um, with specifics about well, you know why working with Dan is a good good thing, but ultimately uh, it needs to be a, a fit. Uh, and uh, Dan is a great fit for obviously those of us uh, who have stuck with this program for uh, I think in all of our cases at least a year. Yeah, Michael, I I think you're absolutely right, and I um I I can underscore that as well. Um, I have spent money and time with others who um, were in marketing space. And I think I shared this with Dan when I first met him. Dan had been communicating with me for several years via LinkedIn and I would politely respond. And it was after my most recent engagement with um, a person who considered themselves a marketing coach. And we had had a lengthy discussion about certain images that were being suggested for my website. And I said, you do realize that I'm, I'm working with attorneys. That image is not going to be well received. And there was a disconnect. Um, the person did not understand the space. And it, it, that in many instances, it's a very formal, it's a very serious space. That doesn't mean there can't be some levity, but our, our my, engagement with that person ended shortly after that because I said I don't think you understand this space and I really need to find someone who understands it so fast forward Dan just happened to send a message and I thought you know what let me give this a try and we started talking and this was someone who understood the space who understood the about the messaging the branding and the importance of what what your visibility looks like your if you will um what's your 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 public presences, you know, what's that persona? And how do you shape that? How do you shape that? So that it, at the beginning, again, back to those who were first starting out, your persona is your business. And as you become more seasoned, yes, you can sometimes say, you know, that's my business, my business has this persona, but you as the owner still have a hand in that. And I think that's where Dan sees the flexibility um, as you progress and can literally say, you know, it's both. It's, you know, starting out, it may be your, your presence on social media. How are you crafting that? How are you shaping that to 
you know, now you have a LinkedIn page for your business. What's, how does that page look compared to your personal page? Because people still see that you are connected and not, you know, let's haphazardly put the most uh, popular picture on a website, your company's website or on your company's LinkedIn page, because again, it's about that message. So that to me um, probably could have saved me a lot of money if, if we had had the conversation, like you said, a little bit sooner, but I, I think it's critical in this space that the person that you work with understands the space. Um, and it's not the same as selling widgets or selling an article of clothing or you know pushing your latest book. Um, this is a space where people are looking for you to, to present as being fair, neutral, and in some cases, quasi-judicial in, 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 in pre presentation. I'm not saying you are a judge. What I'm saying is this is a, a serious matter. Um, and you, know, you can't just show up with your, your gardening overalls and expect someone to say, you know what, this is the person I want to help us in this mediation, or this is the person I want to arbitrate the case. It, it just doesn't work that way. I was about to add a few things, Tina. Uh, to what you said, but you co you covered it all. So I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing nothing to add to it. Thank you. Does this mean we we're running out of tape? We are we are running out of tape. Uh, you know, obviously this is very pleasant for me, but uh, uh, we we had allocated some time, and I want to respect that. Um, thanks ever so much for for joining me here today. Hopefully. Hopefully we provided some insight and value to, to the viewers of this, to the listeners of, of this. So, so thanks, thanks again, everybody. And I will, I will see you on our next uh, group call, which is in a few weeks time. Sounds great. Thanks, Look Dan. forward to it. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dan. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Michael, did you ever...